Bokatov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, both here on live stream. We are streaming live as well as on YouTube. Uh, this will air here in just a little bit here. Uh, we have breaking news. De several different things are actually happening, friends. We are seeing right now the, the reports from Amman, uh, Jordan. Their news is reporting that Turkish warplanes have unexpectedly struck a government-controlled Shiite majority town and military checkpoint areas in northern countryside of Aleppo province amid an intense, intensified air campaign over the Syrian skies. Now this really is beginning to build up uh, a tensions for an all-out war on Syria. Uh, we have watched this closely, guys, and it has appeared from the outset of this that what's happening is that the Turkish government has been working very diligent for a new world order. And as we were reported many times here in the past from a source that we had close to Gulen Fagan, uh, that Turkey was willing to play the bad guy, do the dirty work for NATO in order to uh, uh, move forward the new world order process. And that happens to include taken over these countries that General Wesley Clark told us about uh, that they wanted to overthrow certain countries in the Middle East to reestablish the Babylonian Empire. No wonder why the book of Revelation speaks about mystery Babylon. And that's exactly what we're seeing. All kinds of news is breaking too, guys. We know Stephen Hawking, the, uh, the uh, man that was a quadriplegic, uh, died at 75 years old. He was a scientist, renowned scientist. That came come out this morning as well uh, here in the Czech Republic. And then now we're also dealing with more issues about this uh, ultimatums that the British government gave uh, the Russian government about acknowledging or admitting to the poisoning of the... Uh, of the spies that lived inside of Great Britain there. Now, Russia calls them double agents, and now Moscow says they're not accepting groundless threats and ultimatums and has nothing to do with the Skripal case. Uh, that was a statement that come out by the Kremlin. <clears throat> and there's one thing that was really interesting to me, though, and that is, as I'm watching everything that's happening, I could not help but begin to wonder... Um, Actually, I closed a page that I'm going to need here in just a moment. I'm trying to save on bandwidth here because we are in a, in a situation here to where we're wanting to, uh, we'll go to that one here in just a moment here, uh, to where we can keep this live on live stream. Maybe the camera settings is something I need to change for those of you that are watching on live stream. Uh, but anyway, uh, going back to this here, one thing that really got my thinking here going is that this chemical weapons, and I'm not sure the date that it was actually considered to be developed, but what if this is also a chemical weapon that was very readily available in the former Soviet Union, such as Ukraine, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia? Because you know, at the breakup of the Soviet Union, there was a major, major wholesale of weapons and goods, uh, American uh, interest involved in, in, in just dismantling the Russian nation. And of course, this was certainly a Jesuit Vatican initiative. We know this because Time Magazine published the article called The Holy Alliance when Ronald Reagan and Pope John Paul II worked together to collapse the Soviet Union. Now, it really wasn't so much that they had to collapse anything because the Jesuits were the ones that actually orchestrated and created uh, the Soviet Union with Jesuit trained uh, Lenin and also Stalin. So they kept their grip on this nation, trying to crush the Russian Orthodox Church. And I'm not so much for the Russian Orthodox Church either. I'm not against them. I, I appreciate anyone that, that stands for the name of Jesus Christ and promoting the truth of the gospel. Uh, although I believe that all organizations have a portion of what they believe to be the truth, but not all of them, because clearly God's going to send two witnesses, not Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterians, Catholics, or Russian Orthodox. He's sending two witnesses 
to get the people back on track to that original gospel that was taught by Jesus Christ. Not this new fame thing that the Vatican and all the others are wanting to say that Jesus Christ never died on the cross and they're sending in all types of Jesuits inside of uh, Israel right now to weaken uh, the faith of the Orthodox community. So, or to, I should say, embolden them to be able to stand against Jesus Christ, the true Messiah. Uh, I'm going to go into that in a separate broadcast altogether. But let me continue on in things that are happening here uh, all over the world. I mentioned yesterday about uh, Mike Pompeo, who has been replacing the CIA director that is now replacing Rex Tillerson as the head of state or the head of the secretary of state there. And I know there's a lot of people that say, well, Mike Pompeo is a good Christian man. He is a Presbyterian from what I have been able to gather. I appreciate the fact that he's a Christian, but I also realize the CIA, not under his tenure, has been very uh, involved with the deep state actions that undermined the Syrian government and worked with President Erdogan to smuggle sarin gas into the country that killed thou or hundreds of little children over there. So I'm not very crazy about what the CIA has been doing in their clandine, uh, clandine uh, operations. Also, the woman that replaced him, very big into torture, has overseen many torture facilities. Uh, so very a lot of things that are going on, I'm not very very happy to see to begin with. But also when I look at Mike Pompeo, I also see other issues that are very troubling to me as well. Like I said, one, he's Presbyterian. In the Presbyterian Church, uh, this article here, of course, it's been a little while back, but they traveled to the Vatican in search of unity with the Roman Catholics. And I realize there's good Catholic people, there's good uh, Christians that are Presbyterian, no doubt. But when I see that unification drive and that move to go back to Mother Rome, Rome, knowing this is fulfillment of biblical prophecy, then all of that becomes very troubling indeed. Very troubling indeed. Uh, so this is just something that is not good, and I am just watching these things very closely as we see these things come out. Also, Congressman P Pompeo, when he was congressman, speaks about Pope Francis on his address to Congress. And just like for you guys to be able to see uh, what actually was happening here, Washington, D.C., Mike Pompeo released a statement today following Pope Francis' address to a joint meeting of Congress. Uh, he says, Pope Francis, words of compassion and humanity today certainly touch the hearts and minds of people everywhere, Pompeo said. His message about the power of faith and importance of love and service to others is an incredible reminder of spiritual principles and morals on which our great nation was founded. Now, the problem is, is does Mike Pompeo remember that the nation was founded that said, don't let a pope ever enter this nation? let alone address Congress. Has Mike Pompeo lost it completely or does he really know what the founding fathers believed in in this nation? The, the, the pilgrims came here to escape the clutches of the Vatican and their forced ideology and their forced religion. And now we see even embassies, the Czech Republic and other embassies wanting to be moved to Jerusalem. Why? It's a new world order, friends. They're headed to a new world order. And this is something we've got to take seriously. Those of you that are watching a live stream, we are going to get this problem worked out here. We will have our new internet up soon, and that way our live stream feed will not fail. So forgive me for these troubles that we're having on live stream. I'll also look about downgrading the phone uh, uh, capabilities too so that we can get this picture clear for you guys. So I do apologize for that. Uh, these are just some of the things that I'm looking at. And like I said, as far as Mike Pompeo, uh, I, I appreciate the things that he has said and, and, and as far as for Christ, but I am still watching because you have to remember the whole move against Yeshua to begin with was a very religious move to start with. And I'm seeing a new world order really beginning to come into play, the uniting of all the churches, uh, the church and state together. And, uh, you know, and, and the things that President Trump is doing at this point right now, very concerning to me because it certainly seems like uh, he is assembling a cabinet that is very pro New World Order. We also know that Mike Pompeo is very much for the NSA, the spying upon Americans. 
Uh, I realize that he would say that it's to, to, to weed out terrorists. I could appreciate the fact that we're trying to deal with uh, terrorists entering into the nation, but I'm also very skeptical about what some of these uh, pro programs and processes are. Now, it says right here, this was Reuters, Trump CI pick supports domestic surveillance, opposes the Iran deal. Uh, and again, I can't say the Iran deal was the best thing in the world by no means, but there again, if he's opposing the Iran deal, it goes to show too that what's on the agenda, again, is to take down all these nations, is to revive that Babylonian empire. And is Iran a threat to Israel? Sure they are. Could things be worked out? I think they possibly could be worked out if we would take the time to do so, uh, rather than just rush to bomb every nation on the planet. Uh, is Russia any better? Well, Russia was there to try to stop the spread of ISIS inside of uh, Syria. And of course, he is saying that that's not the case. Mike Pompeo is saying that that's not the case. It did very little to do anything against ISIS uh, when it's totally the opposite. And yet at the same time, they're not willing to stand up for the Kurdish people that have been a great ground fighter for against ISIS. And Russia has been a great air support against ISIS militants. But we have to we forget, though, that Obama created ISIS <clears throat> in order to overthrow the Syrian government to start with. Uh, so this was just a clandestine operation from the very beginning. And it's very troubling to me to see the things that we're seeing here that's going on. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of work to do here, friends, and, and it's really been frustrating. And I apologize those of you watching here on YouTube. Uh, we have been dealing with some very serious internet issues there. We're trying to get our live stream to work properly. And I can see that we're just running it off of this backup system and it's just not able to hold up what's going on. Uh, as far as Twitter too, by the way, friends, I've been blocked on Twitter as far as from my computer. I'm still able to access it via my cell phone. I don't know why the difference, but they have blocked me completely from my computer. And I realize I must be striking a nerve when something like that happens. Uh, they don't want anybody to know the things that we're reporting here. Again, though, our breaking uh, story here today is that Syria, the Syrian government has been attacked by Turkish warplanes. You can't help but wonder if Russians are not going to get caught up in the mixed midst of Turkish bombings because Turkish uh, Russian soldiers are embedded with many of the Syrian military in different parts, especially around Aleppo and those areas there. So it's a very, very tense situation that could easily spiral out of control. I'm Stephen Benoom. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.